Hello, my name is Consetta, and today I am going to finish part three of Christian Divorce. Uh, so it'll be, I know I said the last one was a 3D, but it was actually 3C. This is 3D, and this should be it. Um, I ended the last one and I do apologize. My phone kept shutting down, so I never got to pray with anybody. I was always talking and then it just stopped because I never knew how much time that I would have before it just stopped. So I kept on, <laughs> kept talking. Um, anyway, and I kept trying. And as you can tell, if you've even watched any of the others, that they were really small, short. I thought, you know, I, I can't just keep starting over. I'm just going to keep them. They're short, they're small, but better choppy I guess than just checking them all because you know you put some time into them you know anyway so I was talking about um, putting the past behind you know how Paul was able to go on God even changed his name from Saul to Paul and I do want to pray actually I want to pray first because um, I haven't been able to do that <laughs> And, and the salvation, I'm just going to pray for that up front for anybody, just in case it doesn't want to watch these long videos. And I want to make sure they have an opportunity to get saved because literally, though this, I'm talking about divorce, I really, the main part of these videos is just to get people saved. And, and this other stuff is, is just other things that happen in life to people you know about different situations maybe how to handle this or did you ever think of that and hopefully giving you some um, uh, lessons maybe if you want to call it that to learn from my mistakes other people's mistakes stories that I've heard over the years and so hopefully you won't make the same ones because you know, and I heard somebody say this one time that, you know, you can gain a lot of knowledge, but wisdom is obviously applying that knowledge. You know, the word of God, but then you can even have wisdom on um, learning from other people's mistakes so that you don't make those mistakes yourself. You know, learn from theirs. They already did it and they're gonna let you know this is what happens if you do it this way so the the scripture first that i was talking about was philippians 3 chapter 3 verse 13 about forgetting those things which are behind pressing forward to the high calling that is in christ jesus and this was paul and he said brethren i do not count myself to have apprehended but this one thing forgetting those things which are behind. Um, and the reason I'm saying that, I guess you could say that for people that have already gotten divorced, even maybe multiple times, just to know that just like Paul, his name was Saul, God changed it to Paul and real quick story. I've, I've mentioned it in the last couple videos where, you know, he did a lot of really bad things. He actually had Christians killed. That was like his job to round them up and get them killed. So he's got all that on his, whatever you want to call it, from his past. And he was able, and never could understand how he could do it, was to leave his past in the past and actually walk victorious and do great and mighty things for God. You know, um, I would say would be, you know, being able to accept God's forgiveness because sometimes you know we can forgive ourselves uh, forgive other people that seems sometimes even easier than forgiving yourself because the enemy wants to bring all that back and pound you you know and keep try to keep I would say Christians from going on and doing great things for God so um so you have that and he ended up becoming one of the greatest apostles there ever was so <laughs> there's hope after divorce believe it or not though you feel like an absolute failure if you haven't some some people do okay um so now i'm going to go to um scriptures on salvation just because i haven't been able to get to those in the last so many videos and i just want to put that out there um 
if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not any special words. It's really a matter of your heart. If you've lived your life, you've struggled, um, as everybody has, but you know, you just realize that I need something different. I need something more. Something's missing. You know, God made us, this is a little off what I was going to say, but uh, it goes right with it. He made us with this void inside of us. It's like a like a donut has a hole in it. You know, we were made to have fellowship with him. We're not complete. And and what happens is people they they try to fill their lives with something else to make themselves happy. It could be spending uh, buying you know, constantly, I need bigger, better, nicer, I need more. Because you do get a temporary high, I guess. You know, it feels good. Look at this, oh, you know, look at this new chair or something. You know, it, it's fun, you know. And I, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But if you're using things, or I got to go on another trip, I got to travel I've, the world, or somewhere I missed, or, and again, you may have reasons for doing it. You know, if God's called you to do something, that's one thing. Or if you've worked very hard and, and want to take your family on a vacation. Nothing wrong with that. Again, nothing wrong with these things. But when you're always, no matter what you do, it's not enough. Something still feels, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Because nothing or, or sometimes we bring people into our lives thinking they're going to be that missing link. Or, um, you know, you know, as you can see, it could be a hobby. You know, you just spend so much time on that. And, but no matter what, you seem like you're right back where you were before. It's like, I just don't feel satisfied. And there's a reason for that. You can't, I always call this, I say this a lot, looking for love in all the wrong places. Um, we're looking for satisfaction when really only Jesus can be our everything with him you'd be surprised you can pretty much live without anything or anybody you know and be happy if you really really know him and you really really have a really good relationship with him and I'm not saying you know you have to be single but you know Paul ended up in his life being single I mean he he was it can be done you know what I mean? Because I think in divorce, a lot of times people think, well, I'm just going to get married again, or I'm going to get married again, and I need another one, and, and that's going to fulfill my needs. That's going to make me happy. When in all reality, it's not people that make you happy. It's not possessions that make you happy. I remember, oh, I, I always tell myself, and this is so embarrassing, but Bear with me here. I remember many years ago, as a Christian, okay, this is what's so sad. Actually, it's pathetic. I remember this really rich person, and I wasn't so rich, said, and they were really rich, and they were like, you know, money ain't everything. It's not going to make you happy. And I remember thinking, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> it sure would make my life easier. But you know what? It, it, it never, it never did, you know? Sometimes the more you get, the less you appreciate. And then you start taking things for granted and, oops, you start taking things for granted and people for granted and then it doesn't seem like you're ever happy. You want more. I've gotta have more or, or you know, this isn't enough anymore. You're not enough anymore. But, you know, and I've found out too, not only myself, but others that I've heard, listened to, that I tell you what, and I heard this before, and many times, and unfortunately, I'm going to say unfortunately, people don't um, get this. Because you got to get to a place where you have to realize, and this is true, that you don't realize that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. You know? And uh, 
I think I finally get it why you see in these other countries they're so poor or people maybe out on the street or something you know they're still smiling you're thinking how can you how can you be happy you don't have anything you know or anybody how can you you know because sometimes through losing something or someone or whatever it brings you to a place of you don't have all that pride you used to have anymore. It's, it's humbling. And we forget as Christians that humility in God's eyes is, is good. It's very good, actually. The Bible says, you know, proud. The Bible says um, pride comes before a fall. And humility if you're humble, the Bible says the humble will be exalted. So sometimes you get humble when you're in a situation and you just can't control it anymore and can't seem to get the things you want or person you want to make you happy. We get to a place in our lives that we realize that, you know, Jesus, you're what I need. You're what I want, but I don't really know it <laughs> because you know, the world is just buy, buy, buy. Go from one relationship to another, to another, to another, thinking that these things that I can touch or hold or, or vacations or whatever is going to make me happy when it's really you're looking for love in all the wrong places. It's Jesus what you need because when you have Jesus, it's like, I don't really care if I have all those things that I thought were gonna make me happy. I don't care anymore. I want him. He's what I want. I found out he's really what I want. He's what I need. He's the only one that can give you things that money can't buy. Peace. When it says peace that surpasses all understanding, oh, that's true. It's literally, it's like a presence of God that's tangible. You can actually feel it. And oh boy, does it feel good. If somebody asked me one time, they go, they go, so what do you do for fun? And I'm like, nothing. I mean, I read my Bible, pray, hang out with God, study the word, you know. And they look at me like, are you serious? Like, you got to go out and have some fun, girl, you know. And I'm like, I just looked at him and I was like, have you ever been in the presence of God? And of course, they're going to think you're crazy. But uh, they're like, ah, no, but you got to go have fun. You know? <laughs> so, you know, you could look at people and think that they're crazy. But you know what? They found what money can't buy. I remember listening to a lady one time. Very, very wealthy. Like, really, really wealthy. And I said to her, she had all the, anything you could want, money. She had, it was unlimited supply. And I said, what do you want? What is it? What do you want? And she said, I just want peace. And I was like, wow, that's easy. I mean, I don't know. That's a kind of like a byproduct of spending time with the Lord, you know. But she didn't have it. All the money she had. She could have gone anywhere, had anything. And she did. But she was so unhappy. So, again, there's a joy, joy. You know, happiness comes from getting things. A new outfit, a new picture for the wall, or I don't know, whatever. But joy is supernatural. And it comes from God and knowing God. And it's better than happiness because happiness is temporal. After a while, that wears off. I want something else. I need something more. You know, I want to paint that wall another color. Though I just painted it last year, I want a different, I want another one. I want to decorate. There's nothing wrong with my furniture, but I want all new furniture. You know, something to give you that temporary high, you know, like somebody on drugs or, or drinking or something. It's a temporary fix. Um, but joy can come even in the darkest, most horrible situations um, because sometimes those kind of things happen in life and we can't avoid it. It happens, crises, 
uh, losses of loved ones, things like that. And it's like, now what do I do? Not really nothing makes me happy as far as ain't nothing out there making me happy. You could give them the whole world and all the money in the world and they don't want it. I'll give you 10 trips around the world. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? So even in that instance, material things and money mean absolutely nothing. And uh, there's a joy. The Bible calls it joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it is full of glory. It's when you can have joy in the midst of a very hard, difficult, traumatic experience to just, and I believe it's, it is supernatural. It comes from God himself to enable you to go on and to keep living because you want to keep living. So um, anyway, I don't know how I got on all that, but um, I guess it's kind of just like there's hope after difficult situations and there's hope after divorce now I keep going back to the fact that reconcile if there's any way you can get back together if there's any way you can that's why I think it's important don't shut that door so fast and get into another relationship because how can God work in to bring you back together if you close the door with somebody else because once you do it's pretty much closed if you start getting focused on somebody else and um, I don't care who who started it or who ended it it doesn't matter either one of you you might think well hey I was the one that was done wrong heck with them you know I'm going on I'm getting me somebody else well you know what we have to um, I do want to encourage to honor those vows of you know who's to say maybe that person needs a miracle in their life maybe they're a generational curse has come upon them of anger or alcoholism or um, lust or something or maybe when they were younger before they were a Christian opened up a door to something that now is creeping into their life and and usually those things will creep in when when someone is vulnerable for some reason doesn't say that it's right to do and the Bible does say you're drawn away by your own lust. So we do have to resist the enemy. I'm not saying everybody that has something happen, blame it on a generational curse and then you have to put up with it. Obviously, no, you must get that person healed. If it's a you know mental thing or physical thing, you must go get them delivered. There's so many ways to get delivered, so many ways to get healed. We have to do everything we can do. What if it was one of your children? Would you just throw them out? out and, and say hey and, and don't get me wrong I've heard parents have to do that sometime if the kids are uh, I don't really want to get into the kids thing yet we'll, we'll talk about that at another time um, but we put up with a lot with sometimes people that we want to you know what I mean um, sometimes we put up with more with our kids than we do our own mates and uh, so yeah but anyway <laughs> who's to say that that marriage that person because what if it was you what if it was you that got off wouldn't you want that mate to hang in there with you because maybe you're deceived you know we can get deceived and remember deception is deceiving you don't know you are and I'm actually going to do a video about that, how people can get, I think I, I did one, but I may do another. I can't say 100%, but I might. When you're deceived, you don't know it, but someone else can see it. So I wanna say, if you have a family member or a friend who is willing with backbone to tell you the truth, not to hurt you, but to help you, hey, I see this. This is gonna, this is wrong. I know you don't see it. I still think you're an amazing, wonderful person, but this is what I see. There are people that God brings in your life that are maybe, I don't wanna say more spiritual because that might tick you off, especially if you're in that mode. You know, if you do get ticked off or you get aggravated or upset, that's a sign about you. You know what I'm saying? That you're probably off because a Christian would welcome correction. If you read, I think it's Proverbs. I mean, it goes on and on about, you know, it's great. The wounds of a friend are good. You know what I mean? Or 
and again, that's not physical, but you know, sometimes it, it, you need to tell somebody the truth. They're not seeing it because they're deceived. Just recognize that. They won't know it. They'll probably even get upset with you and aggravated, but that's okay. Eventually, when they get out of that deception, you know, they'll thank you. Because I'm gonna tell you something, if you don't do anything and they come out of it, they'll wonder why you didn't help them. Why didn't you tell me? I'm serious, I've been there. I know. They might get upset with you, but it's better them getting upset with you later saying, why didn't you tell me? You had to have seen this. You know what I'm saying? That's what a good friend or a family member is for, to help us, keep us in line. It's okay to be rebuked or to be corrected. You know, if it helps wake you up, be thankful. I know you won't be, but eventually you will. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate someone's honesty. I tell God all the time, show me, show me, please. If I'm deceived or, or, or send somebody to help me or to tell me. Because you can't see it yourself. That's the whole thing, deception, okay? So I, I could say don't get mad at the person, but you probably will. You know, so anyway, I go back to salvation. Oh, goodness. Uh, and that has a lot to do with divorce, too. Come on. You need people to tell you the truth. You know, the, it, even in churches, it's like, why are you just remarrying that person over and over and over again? Are you sitting down and telling them, I'm sorry, you don't know. This is not right. This is not good. You, there's your children. Look at them. You know? I hate to say this, but I had this one person that I saw and uh, had this wonderful family. And I knew them. And the kids were precious, young teenagers, you know. Young teenagers, too. And you know, something had happened. One was unfaithful to the other one, and then the other one was struggling in that. And it had been a long time, but for some reason, they were struggling in it. They still kept bringing it up, but that's the price you pay when you're unfaithful. You may have to go through some mud, but you know what? That's the price you pay. But they just struggled, and I guess they fought and stuff like that. Well, they ended up getting a divorce and the kids were, I could just tell, you could tell that this, how hard it was. And uh, then the other one just, you know, was already starting to date before they were even um, uh, actually divorced, I believe. And then I think, you know, they even fell course God heals that too and forgives that too but you see what I'm where what I'm saying you know when you start getting into all of that you're even more likely to be deceived especially if you fall into sin so that's when you want to back up but a lot of times you keep going forward but in the wrong direction and then I remember this person saying well this is my soulmate I know this person's my soulmate and they got they ended up getting married and I thought, how could this person be your soulmate when, you know, you have kids and been, actually was married to this person for a while, you know, because they had teenagers, you know. And I was like, how could that person be your soulmate when, when you married this one? I'm sure you probably thought that was your soulmate. So it, it's almost like it kind of. You don't look so good by saying stuff like that, you know. You might as well just say, I messed up royal, um, you know, whatever. It's it's all right, you know. We've all messed up and, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it's just like sometimes we do need to back up and we need to make things right with our original mate. Now, if that person is has already gone on and got married, um, you know, resolve. Just for the, even for the sake of your kids, for the sake of yourselves, you and that other person, um, just to have peace and total forgiveness because um, that's really important to being able to go on and do great things with God. You know, these things have to be, um, all that forgiving stuff has to be happening so that God can work freely with you, you know, because unforgiveness, will, it'll just mess up everything. 
and even you moving forward if you've already you know gotten married if you've already gotten married to someone else my phone keeps saying that I'm on low battery so I better pray and um, I know this is kind of sounded like a counseling session but it's kind of like I said it on one of my videos. It's like a, I think her name was Ann Landers, you know, where people write on, right in and have questions. And you can always put down questions too, you know, or prayer requests. I'd, I'd love to do that for you. Um, but I do want to do salvation before my phone shuts off because it's showing my battery's low. Anyway, I want to say Romans chapter 6, verse 23 for the wages of sin is death. So stop and think about it the wages a wage is something you get paid ah, yikes so for sin the wages is death now this is about salvation this is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior we're not talking about the divorce thing now but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord just in case you're a person that doesn't know that Jesus is the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father Father God but through him Jesus is the only way that's the truth. And then in, in 1 John 1, 7, to just to know that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from our sin. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. We can't go to heaven unless the blood of Jesus washes us and cleanses us from our sin because sin separates you from God and it will definitely separate you from heaven. How are you going to go to heaven? Right? Okay, so what we want to do with all your heart, you got to mean it. If real salvation is actually meaning it and people live for God he also says be a doer of the word and not a hearer only okay you must read your Bible that's your instruction manual to live a victorious life on this earth okay because I personally I don't think I believe in once saved always saved if you're in because there's there is some stuff in there that if you continue in it you know your heart could heart could possibly get hard and you could turn away from the Lord and then you know how would you end up in heaven in that way unless you repented of course y'all could repent okay there's your key right there but again it's a heart issue don't do things knowing you're just gonna do it again tomorrow and I'll just repent tomorrow again God knows your heart if you're sincerely sorry because we're gonna make mistakes I don't know if that's ever gonna end but we don't want to do them with the intent that, oh, okay, I'll just ask for forgiveness. Well, yes, please ask for forgiveness, but mean it with all your heart. God knows a real repetitive heart, okay? Um, it's basically, we want to come to the cross right now. So the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and just say, you know, God, you're the only way. Jesus Christ, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. And he's the only way. To get to heaven and I want to go to heaven someday I want to live my life here and now for you I give up my ways I give up my life for you I want to live for you show me how Jesus come into my heart save me I want to be your child forgive me for my sins I ask in Jesus name amen and amen and if you really meant that guess what you get to go to heaven and that's really that's really that'll bring you joy and that'll bring you peace just knowing that but read your Bible every day as far as the divorce I'm gonna definitely I'm definitely gonna do more in this series I just need to recharge my phone I want to end this before I get cut off again um, just Again, I, I think I've been trying to stress this. Do not try to move so quickly forward. I think that in itself is a deception. Don't, even in a divorce situation, don't, don't be hasty. Don't make hasty decisions. Don't even get the divorce. Now, now again, this is not for people that have already been divorced. But it might be for them. Because some people get divorced again and again and again. So maybe this could help. So hopefully you won't do it again if you have. You know, but so yeah, this could be for you too. Um, don't be hasty. Again, please remember, you might be looking for love in all the wrong places. Let Jesus Christ be the love of your life. 
You know, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Even a mate or reconciliation to the one if you're still able to, um, he'll add all things unto you. It's like you got to go after God. Let him be your everything right now. Okay, do not, if you're angry and you're upset, do not get a divorce under those conditions. It, it won't be good, trust me. And you're thinking, well, if I wasn't angry and upset, I wouldn't be getting a divorce. <laughs> you might have found your answer right there. Maybe you need to get back right with God and get that peace and that joy back. How do you do that? Get in the Word of God. Begin to seek God's face on the matter and say, Lord, what should I do? Show me. Help me. Put your love in my heart. You know, the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And if you're born again, you have the Holy Ghost. And His love, is a, they call it a God by love, it's unconditional. I will love you or that person under any condition. Wow, that's a lot. That would be hard. And like I said in the last video, a lot of times we're not even seeking God or praying or anything because we're so mad. You got to get out of that mad place. It's hard. I know it is. But I can only encourage you, you know, go after God. He'll give you the answers. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the peace. He'll give you wisdom. The Bible says if you need wisdom, and you definitely need wisdom if you're contemplating divorce, if you ask for wisdom, he'll give it to you liberally. He'll give you the answers, okay? And if, if you don't have enough patience to wait, because I want to get on with this, I want to get going, I want to start a new life, lies, lies, lies from the enemy. Because I wonder if the woman who got an abortion ever thinks, why didn't I wait? Why did I rush into that? You know, be patient. And if you don't have patience, you know, uh, patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is, is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, patience, and self-control. Did you notice that every one of those you need to have to have a successful marriage? You might want to look up the fruits of the Spirit. Where you're like, well, I might have some of those, but I don't have all of them. How do I get them? Hmm. How do you have fruit of the Spirit? That sounds to me like spending time with God alone with Him, praying, fasting, reading the Bible. Wait till you hear from Him. You know, let him change your heart and your mind until it's like his. What would he do? What does he say about all this? Those are the fruits of the Spirit. If you don't have the fruits of the Spirit, there's a reason why you could be just a carnal Christian yourself. Sorry. <laughs> I know I was, you know. You need them all. You need all of those. And you need to develop them. If you have to fast, pray in the Spirit, read your Bible. We don't want to do that. We want the benefits of all the good stuff that God wants to give us in life, but we're not willing to pay the price. Those things are, are powerful. Your prayers are powerful. Praying in the Spirit is powerful. In tongues, fasting is powerful. Reading the Word of God every day day do not leave i heard somebody say they go into their prayer closet or wherever they are to have their quiet time and they say you know what i don't come out until i get something from god i don't come out until i hear from him sometimes i think we might do that because we don't want to hear what he has to say you know what i'm saying because we're <sighs> impatient and angry and all those things that are not the fruits of the spirit if you're a christian you should have the fruits of the spirit and if you don't, then that's your problem. You know, part of the problem could be you. So, 
look up the fruits of the Spirit. I'm going to pray that right now. Since somehow that came up, I think it's in Philippians. Please just look it up. Um, again, so many times when I'm talking, I wasn't prepared for that. It just, that's a scripture that just came to my heart right, right now. So let's see, I'm going to pray. If you're lacking in any of those, I'm going to pray for you right now. Okay, let's pray that. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and pray this for yourself. Please put your name in. I'm coming to you, Lord, and those things, I'm going to mention them again, and you could say, that one, that one, that one. The fruits of the Spirit. I want to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, Father God, and help me to get stronger in them so I can walk in them and demonstrate them in my life or in my marriage. It is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, patience, and self-control. Father, right now, I pray for anybody that's watching, if they don't have any of those, I pray that you show them how to get them. When, you know, by reading your word, praying, fasting, praying in tongues, reading your word, and just seeking your face, Lord. And I ask that you would show them, but then help them to obtain the fruits of the Spirit and to stir that up and make it strong in them so they can handle whatever is in front of them in their marriage. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we prayed for salvation. We prayed for the fruits of the Spirit. Please do a study on them. Look it up on your phone. Just the fruits of the Spirit. And that's a that's a good do a good study on that. That's, just keep asking the Lord to help me in that area, Lord. Because with all the fruits of the Spirit in operation as a Christian, it's a byproduct of serving God and seeking Him. And if you're not doing too good in some of those. That's, there's a reason you're lacking in all those areas of prayer and fasting and praying in the Holy Ghost and staying in the Word of God. There, you may not be doing those enough, okay? Not to be legalistic, but that is a byproduct of the fruits of the Spirit that you should have because you have the Holy Spirit in you if you're born again, and hopefully everybody is because <laughs> we did pray for that too. So I'm going to end this here. And I will definitely be doing uh, more videos on uh, Christian divorce, you know. Um, okay, <laughs> so I just pray that, um, where's my little paper? I pray that you receive the word of God with faith like a child. So God bless you. Oh, I also wanted to say that if by chance you wanted to give, to this ministry, um, you can give by Zelle. It should be listed down below. And again, once again, if you have prayers, you prayer requests, I'll pray for you. Any questions, I'll do my best. I'm not an expert, but I'll do my best to help you. So until next time, God bless you.